Mibruo Balthazar had no idea that his life was about to change when he received an invitation to watch the Hope for Africa series sponsored by Hope Channel. Recently, Hope Channel sponsored this evangelistic event in Kenya. Hundreds of thousands of people experienced life transformation and were baptized through the powerful Word of God presented at about 10,000 locations throughout East Central Africa, broadcast on Hope Channel platforms and shared online. Mibruo the founder and leader of a Christian church in the nearby country of Burundi was invited to watch the event at one of the Downlink locations. In 2011, Miburo embarked on a spiritual quest for biblical truth. Frustrated by his search for a church that fully embraced his yearning for authentic spirituality, he established his own congregation. He watched the presentations for three days and was captivated by what he learned from the event's main speaker, Pastor Mark Finley. Miburo, eager to share this newfound information, invited his congregation to join him in watching the rest of the programming. Miburo made a life-altering decision, dedicating himself anew to Christ and choosing to be baptized as a Seventh-day Adventist. Half of his congregation joined him after a few days in this transformative journey. I am extremely happy to have received the message of salvation and even happier because my congregation willingly joined the Adventist Church. My greatest desire is to see the people in this area come to Christ because time is very short and Jesus is coming soon. By the end of the series, the other half of the congregation also embraced the faith and were baptized. This story celebrates the profound influence that Hope Channel programming can have on countless hearts in Africa and around the world. Hope Channel's mission is to share the gospel through a global network. Currently, they broadcast more than 80 channels on television, as well as produce content for social media and digital platforms, including YouTube, in more than 100 languages. Hope Channel celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2023. They seek to extend their network to fulfill Jesus' command to take the gospel to all nations. Please pray for Hope Channel as they open new channels to reach unentered areas. Thank you for supporting the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Renowned preacher George W. Truett was invited to dine at the mansion of a very wealthy man. After the meal, the host took him to a place where they could get a good view of the surroundings. Pointing to the oil wells dotting the landscape, he boasted, as far as your eyes can see, it's all mine. Looking in the opposite direction, where his grain fields bloomed, he said, all that is mine. Turning east toward huge herds of cattle, he boasted, they're all mine. Then, pointing to the west in a beautiful forest, he exclaimed, This is all mine, too. He paused, expecting Pastor Truett to praise him. Placing one hand on the man's shoulder and pointing to the sky with the other, Pastor Truett simply said, How much do you have in that direction? The man lowered his head and confessed, I never thought of that. Command those who are rich in this present age, says Paul not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. 
Ellen G. White says, Satan uses worldly treasure to ensnare, deceive, and delude souls to accomplish their ruin. God has given directions as to how they are to appropriate his goods in relieving the wants of suffering humanity, in advancing his cause, in building up his kingdom in the world, in sending missionaries into regions beyond, in disseminating the knowledge of Christ in all parts of the world. By being generous to others and by regularly returning God's tithes and promise, we tell ourselves and spiritual beings that our possessions do not own us. Those possessions must be considered evidence of God's work in our lives and not of our ability to hoard resources. As we return our tithe and promise offerings, may we put our desires last and God first. Welcome everyone. I hope you all had a great week. These are the announcements. The Women's Ministries Department leader, Sister Rita Slack, would like to meet with all ladies immediately after divine service in the sanctuary. All women who are here, please take note of this meeting and remain after this service. The Education Department, in conjunction with the AY Department, will be continuing the Save the Children series. The next session will be held on April 27, 2024 at 6 p.m. and is entitled, should paying child support determine my fatherhood worthiness? You're all invited to attend. The Women's Ministries Department would like to inform the church and our online viewers that the annual trip to Sight and Sound this year to see the play Daniel will be held on July 11, 2024. Tickets are now available. If you are interested in attending, please see Sister Rita Slack, Sister Joan Jameson, or Sister Olivine Blesdale to secure your seat. The Personal Ministries Department would like to announce the Festival of Young Preachers that will be held on April 20. All youths from the age of 12 through 25 are invited to participate. If you are interested, please see either Elder Faye Gordon, the Personal Ministries Director, or Sister Diana John, the Personal Ministries Secretary. The theme is is God still relevant in this time? Registration is open, so please reach out to the personal ministries department if you are interested in participating. The Sabbath School Department would like to inform you that Community Guest Day will be held on April 20. You are all invited to come out and to bring a friend. The Pearl Ministries Department would like to invite you to join them on Zoom every morning for the month of April from 5 to 5.30 a.m. for prayer. You are reminded of the following meetings that are held during the week via our Zoom platform. The Zoom ID is 711-929-220. Calling number is 929-205-6099. Zoom at noon every day, Monday through Friday for prayers and testimonies with Sharon leaders. Early morning prayer every Wednesday from 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. Power hour every Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Parents in prayer with prayer warriors every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. All parents and guardians, you are reminded that there is a mother's room located to the left as you exit the sanctuary. We are asking that you please take your children into this room when you need to feed and or to attend to them. Please remember that no eating is allowed in the sanctuary. Finally, as you worship with us today, please remember to silence your phones and to take all your belongings and any disposable items with you when leaving your seat after the end of the service. Please remember that this is the house of the Lord and we must reverence it at all times. I leave this thought with you. God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Do have yourself a blessed Sabbath.
Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We want to welcome you into the house of the Lord today. Um, how many can say that they had a good week this week? All right, I see a few hands. How many had not so good of a week this week? Okay, I see a couple hands. Either way, no matter what type of week you had, you are here today. Give God thanks. Give God praise for waking you up this morning, for giving you the strength to make it into his house today. Um, we want to make sure that uh, we have a worshipful spirit today. We want to curb our minds, make sure our mindsets are where they need to be. It should be about reverence, about thanks. All right? from verse 7 to 10. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and even lift them up ye everlasting doors, and the King, the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. 
The church of the living God is now called to worship. Father, we come in your presence and we invite your everlasting presence in our midst. You are God and you are God alone. You are only to be worshipped. So we turn our worship to you and may accept your world of worship with sweet incense. Fill this place, Lord. Fill this place. Come and fill this place. And we will not move until you fill this place. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way in Jesus' precious name. We will now do our affirmation of faith together. And it comes from Proverbs 3. And we will word from verse 1 through 6. Together. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall be added to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. Write them upon thy table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. May your day be blessed. Our opening hymn will be hymn number one, praise to the Lord. Hymn number one, praise to the Lord. scripture reading is from Psalms 9 verse 11 to 20. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. 
declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that lifteth me up from the gates of death, that I may shrew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment with he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For, thy, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Praise the Lord, Sharon. Hallelujah to the Son of God, Sharon. I am a living testimony that God is awesome. That's my word, awesome. In all his splendor and his glory. We are going to pray as the praise team ushers us into prayer. presence, Lord, most holy and marvelous God. We come and approach your throne this morning in thanksgiving, recognizing that you are our Elohim. You are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are our God of everything. And because there is none like you, and there's none that can do what you do. We come giving you praise and thanks and glory and honor and majesty and dominion and authority because you are the one only and true God. To you we owe all our thanks before your blessings and your love and your comfort and your grace that you have bestowed upon us throughout this week. Regardless to what we go through, we come to the conclusion that we, that we can come to you boldly, to the throne of grace, to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. You say you'll give us wings, that we can fly like the eagles, because indeed you are our refuge, you are our strength, you are our present help in trouble. Father, trouble comes, trouble goes, but one thing we know that you still sit on the throne of heaven, 
and that you look and you intercede for your people. And we say, let your name be praised. We bring to you, Father, our congregation. We bring to you our online audience. We bring to you our youth, our children, our seniors. And we say, have your way. Have thine own way, O oh Lord, have thine own way. You are the porter and we are the clay. You have the ability to melt us and mold and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let your name be exalted. Come by, thy Lord Jesus. The song says, come by here, come by here, come by here. And so we bring to you all your workers. We bring to you the priest team. We bring to you, Father, the musicians. We bring to you the, the media personnel. We bring to you the congregation. We bring to you the online audience. And Father, we say, Lord God, even our pastor, we bring to you. We ask in the name of Jesus that we will use each and every one of us for your kingdom's glory. We pray that the Holy Spirit will come by here. And whatever word that you have to proclaim for our hearts, to give us the zeal, to give us the hope, to give us the blessing, to give us the joy, and to give us the peace today, we say, Lord God, do for us what you only can do, let your name be magnified. Bless those who are sick. We bring to you, Sister Boatswain. We bring to each and every one, Lord God, who is suffering some malady or the other. We know by your stripes. By your stripes, Jesus Christ, we are healed. Let your name be exalted. Father, we know that the preacher has a word for us today. And so we say, Father, anoint him afresh with the power of on high. May he speak with boldness. May he speak with clarity. And whatever, Lord, you want us to learn today, maybe open our hearts to receive it. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory and we magnify you because you are our only one and true God. Let God be exalted, we pray. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. was the king of Persia a long time ago. And because Persia was so big, he needed help to lead his kingdom. So he picked three guys to help him lead. One of those men was Daniel. Daniel was really good at his job. Eventually, he did such a good job that King Darius put Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. Now this made the other two leaders really jealous and really mad. They wanted Daniel out of the way so that they could be important again. Now, in Daniel's time, it was normal for powerful people to be corrupt, to cheat those around them and look out only for themselves. But Daniel was different. The Bible says he was exceptional. He told the truth and stood up for what was right, even when it was dangerous for him. Daniel was a really good guy. So even though Daniel's enemies tried to catch him doing something wrong, they couldn't. But they could catch him doing something he did every single day. Every day, three times a day, Daniel opened his windows wide and prayed to God, no matter what. So Daniel's enemies had an idea. They went to King Darius and said, You know, no one should be praying to anyone but you. And if they do, they should be thrown in a den of lions. Now, give the order. Then it can't be changed. 
and King Darius made the decree. Now, Daniel knew about this. He knew what would happen if he continued to pray to God instead of the king. So what did he do? He did what he always did. He went home, opened his windows, got on his knees, and prayed. But he didn't pray to Darius. He prayed to God. Of course, his enemies were watching for him to do this, and as soon as he did, they went to the king. Then they said, Ah, King Darius, didn't you make an order that no one could pray to anyone but you? And if they did, they'd be thrown to the lions? I did. It's a law. It can't be changed by anyone. Then they said, Well, Daniel still prays to God three times a day. King Darius was really upset. He didn't want to punish Daniel. They were friends. He didn't want to throw Daniel in a den of lions. He tried all day to find a way around it, but even the king couldn't rescue Daniel. A king's decision was final. It couldn't be changed. So Daniel was put in a den with the lions with a heavy stone sealing the entrance. And the king said, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. Even King Darius wasn't able to change his decree because even a powerful king like Darius wasn't all powerful. He was still a human king who could be tricked, and he was. Maybe this is why Daniel only wanted to pray to God. God can't be tricked or messed with or undermined. There is no limit to God's power. That's the God that Daniel wanted to worship, and that's the God we worship today. He hasn't changed. He's still good and holy and worth our worship. Now, because God is so good, even though Daniel spent a night with lions who could have torn him limb from limb, the Bible says that God shut the mouths of the lions. When the king came back in the morning, there wasn't a scratch on Daniel. Now, those other two guys who tried to get Daniel in trouble, they didn't do so well with the lions. The king ordered them to be arrested and thrown in with the lions, and before they even hit the bottom of the den, the lions attacked them, and the lions crushed all their bones. Yikes. After this, King Darius gave another order. Everyone should worship Daniel's God. He said, He sets people free and saves them. He does miraculous signs and wonders. He does them in the heavens and on the earth. He has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. This wouldn't be the last time that someone who loved God took a punishment they didn't deserve and did it willingly. And it wouldn't be the last time that a heavy stone was taken away to reveal that someone who should have been dead was alive. And I can't wait for you to hear that story. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, I'm going to read something before I ask the deacons and deaconesses to come up to receive the tithe and offering, and I want you to pay close attention. It's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 40. Uh, read it. You can always check it later. And it says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry and fed thee, or thirsty and gave you drink? When saw we you a stranger and took you in, or naked and gave you clothes? Or when saw we you sick or in prison and came unto you? And the king shall answer, 
and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it also unto me. The point I want to make here is the tithe and offering that you return to the church is part of a larger ministry that goes on locally and throughout the world. And while we or you or I may not be directly involved in something at all times, because we are contributing to the ministry, we are therefore part of what goes on. So well, while I may not be involved in prison ministry, my money is being part of what goes on there. I may not be in the food pantry, but I'm helping to that. I may not be building a house or a church in a foreign nation or even here in the United States somewhere, but the money that I return to the church is helping that both globally and locally. So church, I want to remind you, when you return your faithful tithe and offering to the Lord, not only will the Lord bless you in return for that directly, but you're also part of something bigger. And on that day when God comes and we look around, you realize that some of the people standing there are there because of the ministry that you were involved in. I now call upon the deacons and the deaconesses to receive the Lord's tithes and the Lord's offerings. all the tithes into the storehouse and prove me now to the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven 
and pour you out such blessings that you will not have room enough to receive it. Dear Heavenly Kind Father, Lord, we want to say thank you so much for allowing us to be part of this ministry. We pray that whatever has been gathered here today will go to continue your ministry and bring the knowledge of you to everyone, both locally and throughout the world. Thank you again. Be of those who were not able to participate today. Whatever they need in order to be part of this going forward, I ask that you provide them, provide that for them. In your holy name we do pray. Amen. It is also my pleasure to introduce to you the speaker of the day. It is our one and only Pastor James Bolo. He has been pastor here for a while and he's an excellent speaker for those of you that do not know him. You will be blessed with the message that he is bringing to you today. So after our praise team sings, which by the way, I happen to be dressed in their color so I might join them. Um, the next voice you shall hear will be that of Pastor James Bolo. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know it's a little chilly. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Yeah, a little warmth in our hearts. Amen, amen. We're going to give God a good praise today. It's going to be some songs. We're going to sing like a choir. I, you know, if you know the song, sing along. And if you're singing in your mind, like have your face set up like I'm singing in my mind. You can hear it. We're going to praise the Lord this morning, correct? Come to do our day. 
warm now. I think. I warm now. We warmed up. We warmed up. Come on, soprano. We have a, uh, use a big word, we have the proclivity. <laughs> we, have the, <laughs> we have the proclivity to keep our minds focused on all the bad. Right? Be fair, be honest. So I wake up, and the first thing I talk about, oh, my, my back. Oh, it's, oh gosh, my bank account. They're taking out another bill. Oh my gosh. And we were reminded yesterday that what we should do is wake up in the morning and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See this right? got another, yet another opportunity to just be able to breathe. So, I don't know about you, but with every part of my soul, I'm going to give God praise. I'm going to give God worship. I'm going to fall down. And I, thank you, God. Because opposite of life, it's death, which means if you're not dead, you should be praising God. That's the equation. If I'm not dead, I'm praising God. Period. End, end of the story.
Then that stay on your feet. Give the Lord some praise in the house. Give the Lord some praise in the house. Give the Lord some praise in the house. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. The Bible says, and violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting no destruction within thy borders, but thou shall call thy war salvation and that gift praise I wish I had a praise and worshiper in the house because the gift shall be called praise the sun shall no longer be the light for the day neither for brightness the moon give light unto thee but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light and that God thy glory the sun shall no more go down neither shall the moon withdraw itself for the Lord shall be that everlasting light and the day of that morning shall come to an end come on give the Lord a hand of praise one day morning shall come to an end one day there will be no need for the S-U-N for the S-O-N shall be the light of the city one day Jesus himself shall be there what do you say I love what the song says and sorrow shall not breathe in the air I wish I had a witness in the house and sorrow shall not breathe in the air no sickness what do you say no pain no getting old no saying I'm tired I wish I had a witness in the house and Jesus and Jesus in such shall be there come on give the Lord a hand of praise tell your neighbor say Jesus himself shall be there oh what a day that will be can you see it can you see it 
no need for the S-U-N because the S-O-N is there no need for the M-O-O-N because Jesus is there I wish I had a worshiper in the house I don't know about you but God has been an awesome God what do you say God has been an awesome God this week was tough for some of you but we made it tell your neighbor say I made it uh, you can do a better job than that tell somebody I made it I got people that are watching online and I'm going to do a special prayer for them. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to have a special prayer this morning. I'm going to call just 10 persons. 10 persons. I just need 10 this morning. 10. I need the first 10 to just come quickly. Come. It's only 10 person. He bears me in seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace. I'll cast on my every and wait for the sweet hour. One more time, and sense, and sense, and sense. He bears me in seek his, believe his word, his word. Word and trust, trusting in His grace, I have cast on Him mine every care and wait for Thee, sweet time of prayer. Great God. It was you that bid us seek your face. In fact, you are disappointed when your house don't pray. You said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. For all nations, you are disappointed when the people don't pray. Father, we've come believing your words and trusting your grace. God, we've heard the song sang this morning. God, you, you, you are awesome, God. You are an awesome God. You, you work miracles beyond our imagination. God, today we've come despite the toil of this week, despite the strain of this week, we've come to give you praise and honor because the best is yet to come we've come to give you glory because there are still glorious days ahead 
and God we can look by faith and see it afar and give you praise to the Father we've come because we understand that there is no other help but you Father this morning I have some names God I present to you the two Morrises this morning their mother is praying for her sons God I pray that you will be with them I pray God that you will touch them you will draw them to you with an everlasting love you will do for them that which no man can do nobody can do because you love your people God today we thank you in advance today God I present to you your daughter she's watching she's praying at this moment she has a bottle of oil that she wants anointed God I present to you Mirthly in a very special way I present her daughter to you in a very special way Brianna God I pray that you would touch them both God as she presents this all to you in your presence great God will you anoint it afresh will you take it Holy Ghost that simple oil may you make it go for holy use and if something happens when it's used God we want to thank you in advance Lord I present her brother Brent to you in a very special way I pray that you will re restore his memory God you will turn him back you will turn back those screws and God you will connect all of the dots we want to thank you we pray for Marvel in a very special way we pray for Montel in a very special way Siobhan in a very special way God we pray that you would do for your people that which no man can do because you are still the great physician you are still the sympathizing Jesus God today we pray that you stand by your daughters your sons God you will restore you will repair because you are able God they believe and we believe will you please go to Moses at this moment on the eighth floor room 13 God the second bed will you stand by your daughter she's tired and weak God she's been in there asking what now great God I know you're not done with her God I pray today together with your people that you Jesus will visit that room that they will touch the hem of your garment and know that your blood still makes hold God I pray that something will happen today that doctors and nurses will marvel because they were asked how did it happen and we would tell them that the sympathizing Jesus stopped by great God we believe today and so we agree in the name of Jesus Lord will you please touch Bethlehem in a very special way will you touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet God will you massage her tummy will you create in her a new organ will you restore the joy of her salvation and God we thank you because we believe that you are able in the mighty name of Jesus we want to bless your name God will you go to Africa at this moment there is a daughter that has been left to die because they seem that there is no hope but God will you touch Helena right now from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet will you stop the pain will you ease the pressure may she feel a touch from the master's hand oh it is Jesus God, someone came to your altar today sick. Will you please touch them? Will you please touch them? Lord, will you please heal them? Will you restore the joy of their salvation? A mother is watching, testifying, thanking you for what you've done. A daughter is praising you for what you've done. A son is praising you. God, somebody came to give you glory for what you've done and God today we just want to lift our voices and say thank you Jesus we want to say worthy is the lamb to receive glory and honor 
God will you be with our young people will you bless them will you provide for them will you open doors for them may you turn away disappointment to joy may you turn away sadness to gladness may you wipe their weeping eyes for those that are mourning will you come for them great God we want to thank you great God today we pray for the city of Mount Vernon we pray for his leadership we pray for the officers we pray God that you will bless your people we pray for our conference and this leadership we pray God that your presence will abide with us and Lord all of those that are watching may they say today I was glad to be in the house of the Lord and Lord thank you do for us that which no one can do Oh Lord, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. And Lord, we will be careful to give you glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. I say in the mighty name of Jesus. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give him a hand of praise. Before I preach today, I'm going to call my prayer coordinator, Ella James. Ella James have a testimony she wants to share. And while she's coming up, I just want to say at the end of the service, I'm going to be taking up a special offering for the appeal that have been made. I want to thank you for your generous donation. Um, I pray that God will bless you immensely as you gave to this cause to help someone get treatment. Amen. Oh, I see Ella Terrence too. Yes, this is part of the miracle. Michelle, can you come please? Yes. James um, Bolo, the sin, um, junior, not the Stay there, Pastor. Not, no, Pastor, stay there. <laughs> so I want to tell you um, how awesome God is and how marvelous He is in all His ways. Yesterday, not yesterday, Sabbath morning, I came to church. Came through that door. We were, I mean, Sister Bolo, we teach a class. And she asked her son, Where's James? Where's James? To get me a chair and he took the chair and put it down and I was going to sit and he says it's um it's dirty so I stepped back and um trying to be free I had a shoe that had bows at the, <laughs> on it and as I move my feet so that I can move the chair I find myself on the floor but before I feel that my feet was hooked on something and I couldn't let it go so it fell, and I'm saying in my mind as I'm falling, what happened? Yes, my foot hooked up because there was nothing there. And another sister passed and said, it's your bow in the shoe. So I fell, brushed myself out, and sat down. But there's a young man in the name of James Bolo that was just so broken. Where is James Bolo? He needs to come. <laughs> he was just broken, so emotionally and and sympathetic about what happened that he had to get up from his seat and go to wherever he went to. I spent the entire day fine and that little pretty shoes I'm saying to myself what well, that shoe is so comfortable. I was fine all day. James Buller that's for you. Come here. <laughs> that's for your love. And then at lunchtime came, um, brother John passed soup and I took soup and I drank soup and he passed again. I said, ooh, that's supposed to I took again. And I said, wow, that soup was so salty because my feet is hurting me. I was sitting on the heater. And I just felt something streaming down my leg, up to my foot, excruciating. And then I'm saying to another sister next to me, I felt this morning. And then the other sister said to me, you know why your feet is hurting you, right? 
Before I could leave that spot on the heater to go sit and eat my food, I'm limping. Pain. I met three children, but pain. I sat there at my food talking to Sister Scholar, and now I'm saying, let me go home and put my feet up. I couldn't walk. So I taken off the leather pre shoe off my feet, and I trying to walk on, my, on the bare floor, but because my feet was like this when it swole, I couldn't put my feet down. So I'm there limping away, and this precious sister said, what happened to you? I say, my feet is hurting me, I will go, whatever, whatever, whatever. The point we made, I went to the elders' room, and a beautiful nurse, she's not here, Amoy Hall. She came and sat next to me, get ice, place on my feet, and she sat with me for about, what, an, almost an hour? And then Michelle is telling me, put your head down and rest your head down and just relax. Pain, pain, pain. I call for urgent care, no urgent care. They promptly asked me not to go to um, emergency room because I might spend the entire night there. And she, I, Anne Almery gave me two pills, which I took for the pain because it was so excruciating. And I was about to go home to rest my feet and I'm holding the nurse and I'm limping and I'm um, on one leg. And Michelle is saying, you, no sis, you can't do that, walk on the leg. When I put my feet down, it couldn't stay down. Pain, pain, pain. Some men came around and going to take a chair to carry me down. The, the nurse says to me, um, how, how heavy are you? I'm not going to tell you the weight then. How heavy are you? And I told her the weight and she says, oh, do you mind if my husband carry you to my car? I wonder, no, no, what is she talking about? So she said, yeah, anyway, she carried me to the car. And by the next, by the evening, I was fine. So I just want to tell you that God, when God is in it, when you pray, pastor came and looked at me for a little while and he prayed, he prayed and it is from God's business. But by the time it was 10 o'clock that evening, when I looked at my feet, my feet was fine. I could not walk still. I could not walk still, but my feet was fine. By, by next morning, I was fine. I went to work all week. Now I'm here. I'm here. God is awesome. God is marvelous. But I want to tell you the love. The love and the love and the love and the love and the love that is in Sharon Church. Sharon is a blessed church. Pastor, you have a very good church. May God be praised and God be exalted. So I have this for Michelle. Just love each other because God is awesome. Put your hands together. Amen. Give the Lord some praise in the house. <laughs> amen. Amen. To God be the glory. You know, Elder James, I saw that big bag. I thought it was me, you know. Did you, I know you all thought so. Isn't that right? If you have the Bible, stand with me into the book of Revelation. What do I say? What did I say? The book of Revelation, Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2. If you have it, say amen. To our online viewers, we want to say you're welcome and we want to thank God. Amen. This has been an interesting past week. Many of you saw the solar eclipse, am I right? You all, many of you saw it, isn't that right? A great phenomenon. We're driving, there were people all around the place, you know, in the mountains looking and with their dark shades just looking at the Terrence. I said to myself, one of these days, we you two will be looking. <laughs> Except this one, the Lord himself will descend with a shout. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I get excited about that one. What do you say? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We, we saw it. It was great for a moment. Revelation chapter 2. Are you there? Let us read. Verse 1. Unto the church 
unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who dwelleth, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are what? They are what? Apostles and are not and hath formed them what? Liars. Somebody say ouch. And hath borne and hath patience and for my name's sake has labor and has not what? Has not what? Fainted. Amen. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. But this does have, has that thou hittest the deeds of the Nicolodians which I also what? Hate. Verse 7. Let's read that together. He or she that have what? An ear. Let him what? Hear what the Spirit said unto the what? The churches. To him that overcometh. Where I gave to eat of the tree of life. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Thy first love. Thy first love. Father, speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thy first love. It's very important. I want us to think. I want you to think for a moment. Thy first love. God Revelation is a very fascinating book. What do you say? Revelation is a very fascinating book and the book of Revelation is not the revelation of John. So in your Bibles when you see the revelation of John that's the wrong title. It's not the revelation of John. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's say that the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not of John. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave to his servant. John to pass on to the churches. Are you listening to the preacher? So, the Bible talks about everything, but Revelation talks about Jesus. Do I get a better amen than that? <laughs> Unfortunately, many of us look in the book of Revelation and just fo focus on the beach or the Pope. And all of that revelation is not about that. Revelation is about who? Jesus Christ. Jesus is replete on the pages of the book of Revelation. What do you say? So everywhere you pass in the book of Revelation, you see Jesus. So Jesus is introduced in the book of Revelation. And as he's introduced by John, Jesus makes this statement to John. He said to John, I want to, because John now is off the Aegean Sea, banished on Patmos. Now Patmos was like a solitary confinement. If you were sent to Patmos, you must be very bad. Hello, somebody. It was where they put you for no return. Somebody said, ouch. 
scholar believes that John was around 90 plus years of age when he was put on Patmos. And sometimes people say, why at this age he's old? Why is he going through this? Um, according to tradition, they believe the reason John was banished of Patmos was because while they were killing the rest of the disciples, they made a mistake and boiled some hot oil and said, we're going to make John a public example. And they put him in the oil, boiling oil. But after a while, John came out. Hello, somebody. Tradition said that John could not be burned by oil. Somebody give God a hand of praise. And because of that, they said, we must banish John or else people will start worshiping John. Are you listening to the preacher? But I, le I learned something from him there. If it's true, then I want to say to God be the glory that though he slain me, yet would I trust him. That no weapon form fashion against me shall what? Prosper. If you trust God and walk by faith and not by sight, Though you walk to the valley of the shadow of death, you don't need to be afraid for God is with you. I wish I had a witness in the house. I used to pastor a city and they said when I went to do pastoral visit and they would say to me, I, I, I remember I used to visit this one family to go and do Bible studies and every time we went there, the lady would look at me and say, Pastor, how do you make it down here? I said, what do you mean? She said, people from the west side don't come to the east side. Hello, somebody. He said, she would tell me, Pastor, I don't know how you make it because this side is just different from the other side. I say you don't have to be afraid for the preacher. When Once you work for God, you don't have to be afraid of the terror by night. Are you there with the preacher? When you serve God, he will take care of you. What do you say? I am a witness. In the book of Revelation, Jesus introduced himself in Revelation 1 verse 8. He said to John, tell them, I am the Alpha. I wish I had a witness in the house. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus said, I am the one that started him in history. I am the beginning before the beginning began. I am the one that started before it happened. Are you listening to the preacher? And I am the Omicron, which is the last Greek letter. He said, I am the last to come. There is none after me. There was none before me. Hello, somebody. That's why I have a problem with those that said Jesus was just an ordinary man. He's not an ordinary man. He was verily, verily God. What do you say? I am the Alpha and Omega. In fact, he tells John, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. He told John that. Then he said, I'm going to come with clouds and every eye. God, you're quiet on the preacher. Some of us had no money to buy that fancy sunshade to see the solar eclipse for three or 20 seconds. Hello, we know that. You, you are smart Adventist folks. Hello, somebody. Now wasting my money. Are you listening to the preacher? But on that day, you don't need some glasses. He said, I'm coming with clouds. And every eye shall see him. In fact, I was driving. I began to think about it because I was driving. I was a little distracted because the cloud, the, the cloud began to get dark. So I put my face under my windshield and began to look up as I was driving. Lord, babe. You got to pray for your fear. I pray, I'm saying, Lord. But then a thought came to me. Son, there is coming a day when you don't need to do that. And I began to question. I said, Lord, how is this going to happen? I began to try to figure out. But I could not wrap my mind around it. He said, I'm coming with God. In other words, he's going to empty the storeroom with, of angels. For the very first time, heaven will be empty. Are you listening to the preacher? The Bible says that all the holy angels, can you see them? God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Sir. The seraphims and the cherubims. Are you there with me? And then the angels and the 24 elders. And he said, it's time to go to planet Earth. I got some folks together. Whom are you listening?
sitting with a preacher and the Bible says for the very first time heaven is empty I wish I had a witness in the house uh, if you are in Mount Vernon you will see him uh, if you are in Barbados you will see him uh, if you are in Trinidad you will see him uh, if you are in Jamaica you will see him if you are in Guyana you will see him Dominica you will see him uh, can I talk about Africa for a moment uh, wherever you find yourself on the continent you will see him because every eye shall see him I wish I had a witness in the house give the Lord a hand of praise And as Jesus is introduced for the very first time, we see him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right on, King Jesus. No man can hinder thee. Are you there with me? John said, while I was looking, <laughs> while I was looking, I saw one amidst the seven golden candlesticks. One like the son of man. Ah, uh, you're quiet. You know, this always, this always, I get, I get excited when I hear the son of man. The only being, the only person of the Godhead that forever is linked with humanity. Don't be surprised when you see him look like this African. Hello, somebody. The only person with the God. Are you listening to the preacher? The Bible calls him the son of man. Are you listening to the preacher? The Bible says he's come, he's clothed with a garment down to his foot. I should have worn my priestly robe today. Hello, somebody. Down to his foot. Are you listening to the preacher? And girded about the pips with a golden ghetto. Hello, somebody. He's no longer a baby. He's no longer a crucified uh, Lord. Now he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Are you done with a preacher? And he's walking amidst his church. Uh, his head, his head, and his hair were white like wool. Hello, somebody. As white as snow. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. I wish I had a witness in the house. Uh, and his feet like unto farm brass. Hello, somebody. And if burned in the furnace. And his voice is uh, like the sound of many waters. Uh, and he had in his right hand the seven stars now 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 the candlesticks are seven the stars are seven representing the same thing the candlesticks represent the seven churches the stars represent the seven churches are you listening to the preacher the candlesticks represent the light. You see, the church is supposed to be a light in the dying world. Are you listening to the preacher? Unfortunately, the church has some issues. Somebody say, ouch. But the church is still the light. What do you say? The church is still the avenue by which God has chosen to save humanity. Are you listening to the preacher? Before it was the Jewish nation, but somewhere in Jeremiah, they forgot their first law of Jeremiah 2 verse 2. They forgot their first law and, and in the New Testament we see they've drifted away from, the, from God. In fact, they said to him, we will crucify you and your blood will be on our heads and, and upon the head of our children. Somebody say, ouch. And when they did that and refused to follow God, Jesus conferred. He said, I'm going to take the church. I'm going to make the church the living foundation of my kingdom. And true man church, anyone comes to my church, it shall be called a house of prayer. Burdens will be lifted in the church. Jesus will be very near. That's why today God is here. What do you say? John said, when I saw him, he said, he just did not have the church in his hands, but in his mouth went out two sharp as sword. John said his countenance was brighter, his countenance was brighter than the sun in its full strength. 
You did not understand that. I got to say that a little slower. I know they say if you look at the sun too long, if it's very bright, you'll get blind. Hello, somebody. And that's why on that day, we must be changed. So we'll be done with the troubles of this world. You see, I, I, it gives me hope. It says he is so bright that he's brighter than the S-U-N. But how am I going to see him if I've not been changed? I read somewhere when the Lord himself descended with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. The Bible says then we will be changed. In fact, the Bible says something that I love. Then this mortar shall put on immortality. For the very first time, I'm death proof. Hello, somebody. I need no sunglasses. Are you there with a preacher? Every now and then when I'm looking in my notes and trying to read, uh, Brother Ashley, for some reason, things get fuzzy out. And, and I, I got to pull it away for a little bit uh, out of my chain. I'm saying, Lord, this eyes must be deceiving the preacher. Uh, but he said that day we will see him because everything will be made new. What do you say? <laughs> what a day that will be. And then John said, I fell at his feet as though dead. He said, fear not. I am the first and the last. Are oh, you quiet on the preacher? I'm talking about this same Jesus. I am the what? First and the last. He saw you before you were conceived. He knew you after you were born. Hello, somebody. And he knows where your end shall be. Hello, are you there with a preacher? And despite everything, he said, I will come and lay down my life because I love them. Are you listening to the preacher? What an awesome God is our God. Give him a hand of praise. Then he makes a declaration that no religious leader could make. Listen to this. He said, I am he. Verse 18 now, I am he that liveth <laughs> and was dead. Oh, I, I so much to start standing now. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. I am he that liveth, was dead. At a job, he speaks in the present tense. He goes back in the past, then he jumps to the future. Are you listening to the preacher? I am he that liveth. Hello. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. It doesn't matter what man may say. Someone said, but how do you know? He woke me up this morning. Peps in my steps. Every day you see the preacher running is because of the grace and mercy of God. Because I know doctors told me you'll never walk again. Hello, somebody. But I'm still running. What do you say? I'm still playing. Uh, hey, when you serve God, you can trust him because he's able. What do you say? I am he that was dead. I am alive. And I live for what? Evermore. No religious leaders can make such a claim. He said, I have the past in my hand. Are oh, you quiet on the preacher? I have the past in my hand. I have the present under control. And have the future. Are you there with the preacher? I know that. Are you listening to the preacher? Your situation will not remain the same. He said, I know what your end will be. It's just a temporary trial you're going through. But I know your future. If that's true, give the Lord a hand of praise. I love what he says. In fact, he also make a claim that I have the key. Yeah. 
I have the key. <sighs> but pastor, what kind of key you're talking about? I have the key. And a Terrence, you got a nice car and a Terrence, but not that key. Some of you have some nice friends at home, but not that key. Hello, somebody. I, 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 some nice key. No, 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 not that key. Some of you have some golden key, but not that key. You know, I've been places to show me some nice fancy key. You know, you go to some fancy, give you the key uh, to a million dollar home, two million dollar home. Yeah, that key. No, no, not that key. For all of those things perish. He said, I have a key for something. I have the key for the grave. He said every grave out there on the sea, in the air, in the water, on the land, I have the key for everything. What do you say? Oh, we're in good shape. Hello, somebody. I have the key of the grave. It pays to serve Jesus, whatever be time. It pays to serve him. Do I have some server in the house, some worshiper in the house that can testify that it pays to serve Jesus? Whatever be time, it pays to serve Jesus. Jesus I learned this from the very early age and it's sweet to serve Jesus David said taste and see that the Lord is good are you there with me it pays to serve Jesus those that know God knows life what do you say Jesus said, I came, John, I want you to go and strengthen my church. My church is going through some rough moment right now, John. Will you go please and strengthen the church? You see, Ephesus was a lovely church. In fact, historical writing says that the church of Ephesus, the city was located about six miles from Patmos. So it was the closest church to Patmos. Are you listening to the preacher? You see, Ephesus was the largest political city around that time. And Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, began to have some problem. When the church first started, the members were caring to each other. The members showed love to one another. They were concerned. They were bearing each other burden. If you did not have, they gave. They never talked about each other. Are you listening to the preacher? They were willing to visit each other. You know. There was a time that we visited each other. There was a time, and I'm using the word was because it seems like it's in the past. I mean, now and then they can even FaceTime you, you see their home. Open house now can be done remotely. Am I saying the truth? There was a time people were not afraid to let people see what was in their house. Because the church believed that we were each other's keeper. We were brothers and sisters. In fact, the Adventist church was built, is built on the principle that we are brothers and sisters. It's not true. In fact, it's in this church you learn now and then all of a sudden now, Lord help me, help me, Holy Ghost. It did not matter what color 
qualification you had. When you came to the Seventh Day Adventist Church, we call you brother and sister. There was a time you could call the preacher pastor and he or she was what? Satisfied. Help me Holy Ghost. But every now and then you go to preach, they want a whole bio. Can I just talk about myself? I never forget I went to a church. I'm not going to tell you where. You might know the church. I went to go and preach. I, you know, the pastor was about to retire. He said, Bolo, you might be the one pastor in this church. So be nice. <laughs> I got there to preach. The pastor sent a message. He need a bio. I sent a word back. Tell the pastor. I told the pastor. I wrote, James Bolo. And um, I'm in the kids. Love the Lord. Send it back. He sent it back to me. This is not sufficient. I sent it back to him. James Bolo. Love evangelism. Shorter. Send it back. He sent it back. we met in the office he said to me he said to me young man I said yes he said we have professionals out there and you need to give a proper introduction of yourself we need to know if you went to which school you graduated from and um, what degree do you have how many churches you've passed and when he was done talking, I looked at him. I had a smile on my face. I said to him, my name is James Bolo. And I gave him the same introduction. <clears throat> my uncle was sitting in the congregation with PSG. He was sitting on the other side. He looked at me. I looked at him. He smiled. He said, something's going on. I said, we'll be fine. But now. We have forgotten our first calling. We have forgotten why we even joined church in the first place. We have forgotten the reason we are Seventh-day Adventist Christians. This is not a fancy fair, uh, fun fair. This is not where we come and show what we know and what we have. Yes, it's good in the Seventh-day Adventist church. I can boast that we are educated. We have these things, but all of that You know, no, I could boast and tell them I've traveled here uh, because I've traveled almost everywhere in the world. I, I can boast and say that I've preached almost everywhere. I can boast and say all oh, these souls have been won. But, but what good is it after all of that and I'm lost? And the church must come back to its first love. We're in church now and if we don't get position, we get upset. Hello, somebody. See people doing nomination time. Uh, they get upset. Some leave the church and don't come back. Are you... Just be glad that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The church of Ephesus 
was a good church politically situated. And the Bible says something about the church and I love what God does. He appraised the church in a positive way. I tell people, before you put me down, tell me some good things about myself. Tell me some good things about me. I, I, I know the preacher. Before you tell me, preacher, you, you're too long, tell me some positive things. That sermon was nice, but preacher, you went to... <laughs> Can I help me, Holy Ghost. But you know, there are people, there are some people, they is just so rough. Ouch. Lord, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus appraises the church. Jesus said to the church, I know your works. You have sound doctrine. Oh, the Seventh-day Adventist church has sound doctrine. Hello, somebody. In fact, we can boast of it. No one knows the state of the dead that we know it. Because in the Seventh-day Adventist church, we understand you don't need to be afraid of dead people. When you die, you are resting. Hello, somebody. Death is asleep. We know that. The Seventh-day Adventist church, we understand that the Seventh-day Sabbath still stands. It does not change from one new moon to the next. One day when we get to glory, we will still keep the Sabbath. Are you listening to the preacher? In the Seventh-day Adventist church, we understand that there will be a resurrection. In the Seventh-day Adventist church, we'll understand the doctrine of the sanctuary, that we have a high priest who is stressed by our infirmities. Are you listening to the preacher? Who understand my sorrow, who knows my language. We have an high priest. Uh, he's after the order of Melchizedek. Are you listening to the preacher? We have a high priest uh, that knows what we're going through. I love the song that said, Jesus knows all of my trouble. Uh, he will bear me till the end. Uh, no one like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Uh, we have an advocate with the Father. He sits at the right hand. Are you listening to the preacher? And so we have the doctrine of the sanctuary. In fact, in the doctrine of the sanctuary, we understand that without the shedding of blood, uh, sin would not be forgiven. That man must die, but Jesus steps in. Because the blood of bulls and lambs could not cut it. Some of us are too poor to bring lamb every Sabbath. Some of us don't have it to pay our bills. Are you listening to the preacher? We're still back due on the rent. Are you listening to the preacher? But he said, come, because I'm going to lay down my life that you may have it more abundantly. Come. And so we understand the doctrine of the sanctuary. If that's true, give the Lord a hand of praise. In fact, we understand, we have understanding in tithing offering. Isn't that true? We have understanding that when you give, in fact, we understand that it's not just about giving, that your body is the temple of God. We understand that when we talk about giving in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, it has no more to do with money than your entire body. It's your entire being that God wants. In fact, we we'll refuse your money if we understand that you are doing terrible things and bring it to the church. Are you listening to the preacher? We want you to bring your entire being and give your service. When you work, you work for the master. You live your life according to the master's plan. It's not so much show your tithe and your offering. But, but, but we also know that in recorded scripture, once it's written, prove me not herewith, said the Lord of hosts. Are you listening to the preacher? So we understand that. He said the church of Ephesus and him has something in common. What was that? He said they hid the Nicolaitans. He said I do too. I hid for teaching. These were the, this was a group that taught compromise in the church. 
They were saying that really doesn't matter that the stand of God really doesn't stand anymore. That's old faction. Are you listening to the preacher? And Jesus said, I hate them and you hate them too. Are you listening to the preacher? And when Jesus was done talking to the church of Ephesus, you think that was done. When Jesus was done, Jesus said to them, but I have a case against you. You have forgotten your first love. Oh. You have forgotten what? Your first love. Friends of mine, why was the reason you joined the church? Why was the reason you followed Christ in the first place? He said you've forgotten your first love. Somebody say, ouch. You see, Jesus is saying, in order for you to be what I want you to be, you must have a vertical relationship. And then there are some people that say, well, I love the Lord. Somebody say, ouch. <laughs> Have mercy. First John 4 verse 20 says, if a man, I'm reading from the Amplified Version now. If a man or woman says, I love God and hated his brother, he or she is a liar. Somebody say, ouch. For he that loveth not his brother or sister whom he has seen. How can he say he loved God he has not seen? So there are some of us that say, but I love God. That's the vertical. But there is a horizontal relationship. Oh. The church has good doctrine. Good teaching, boats everywhere they go, hits false teachers, in fact have tested false prophets and declared that they were false and Jesus said it's true. But Jesus said all of that in itself will still get you to be lost. Somebody say ouch. He said what's going to save you, what's going to save James Bowler? Is the love you have for God and your fellow man. If that's true, someone say amen. amen. You know, I'm tired of a church that keep asking you, uh, you know, uh, Every time I, every time I travel, people see me. Sometimes they, they, they ask me, "Where are you from?" <laughs> so when I found myself in Mona, Jamaica, I say, "From Jamaica, man." I'm on the Trini. I'm a Trini. <laughs> The church should not be so. It's not where we're from, it's where we're going. Love overshadows division. Love overshadows Hatred loves cover multitude of sin. Love make excuse for error. Jesus said, you have good preaching, sound uh, preachers, but you don't love me. Should I even step on the gas? If we do anything in church and we don't do it out of the heart of love, we are wasting our time. <sighs> mm. Lord.
God help me. The last time I was upset with someone, not in this church. And I was going and I went to a departmental store. And I went in there and I went to my favorite section. I saw me a nice pair of shoes. And I bought it for that person. Even though I was upset with the person. What would constrain me to do that? Oh, you did not hear me. I was not asked. I was not told. The person did not even know I was getting it. You see, when you love... Love constrains you to do some things that you don't want to do. Are you listening to the preacher? And many of us talk love, talk love, talk is cheap. If you can show it, by this Jesus said in John chapter 3, they will know you're my disciples if you show love one for another. If you show love one for another. Don't tell me you love me and you bite, bite him. Are you listening to the preacher? You got to show me. Years ago, I was in San Francisco, California. I was doing some work. And that night I got back to my hotel room. At the end of the day, years ago, I got on the phone, I called my bride. I began to talk. I must have spoken for maybe an hour, Sister Veronica. When I was done, Sister Clark, when I was done talking, she said to me, the way you sounded tonight, if you read a man that you would have been here. Because love is not what we say. If that's true, give the Lord a hand of praise. She said to me, if you really mean that, we say we love God when it's time to give, we can give. We think about everything else before God. We say we love God when it's time to come to work and sacrifice for the house of God. We can come. We say we love God when I ask us to do things we don't. We say we love God. Listen, you're not doing it for the preacher. The love of God should constrain you to do things. Are you listening to the preacher? Jesus said the church is almost perfect, but it's lacking one thing. And that is what? Love. Love for each other. And some of us keep carrying all malice from 233rd, White Plains Road. We carry malice from under the tent. We carry malice from, from our, our restoration. And then we move to the new. Can I preach? Yes. I know my time is up. I've gone a little bit over my time. But the Lord wants me to talk. The church of God, when it has love, it will let go of things in the past. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise if you believe that. 
That thing happened was a long time ago. Some people walk away from the church because someone treated me this way. Leave them. No one should drive you from church. You should love God so much so that even while they are talking, you are praising. You should love God so much so that while they are talking, you are dancing. Hello, somebody. You should love God so much so that while they are criticizing, you are still coming. Are you listening to the preacher? You should love God so much so and said nothing will separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. You should love God so much so that you will declare that not even angels will separate you from the love of God. No demon in hell will separate you from the love of God. Nobody will separate me from the love of God. I love God so much, uh, no death uh, or life, uh, because one day the Lord himself uh, will descend from a shout uh, with the voice of the archangel. I don't know about you, uh, what a day that will be. Uh, I cannot be separated. Uh, Jesus said, I love you uh, with an everlasting love. Uh, my love constrains me. Uh, God was in Christ, uh, reconciling the world to himself. Uh, I love them so. Give the Lord a hand of praise. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. Praising his sound music in the sweetest name oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus because he first one more time, press it. Oh, 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 oh. oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he birthed me. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give him a hand of praise. Jesus tells the church he said I want you to do three things he said I want you to remember your first love that's why he said in Revelation he said remember your first love then he said because you remember your first love I want you to repent the Greek word said I want you to turn around right now Friends of mine, you can hear all these messages all your life and at the end of the day, we are lost. Good sermon will not do it. Oh, I love the praise team. Get the praise team my hand of praise today. They did an amazing job. But the singing would not do it. All of the doctrine we know by the church would not cut it. We smile with people outside but the person sitting next to us, we are holding malice against them. How long? He said, I have, a, I have, I have an issue. I have an issue. You're holding on to somebody, you're not letting them go. Love covers multitude of sin. Let it go, he said. And then he says something amazing, Ella Terrence. He said, when you've done that, I will give you access to the tree of life. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. 
you see it was a tree of life in Genesis 2 verse 9 that was lost in Eden hello somebody it was a tree of life that Adam and Eve did not touch off but now Jesus said when Eden is restored the new heaven and the new earth I'm gonna give you the tree of life which bear 12 manner of fruits and the leaves shall be for the healing of the nations come on give the Lord a hand of praise do you want to be there now listen to, listen to this, I love this part. Because on the tree of life, it bears 12 manner of fruits every month. When I was a little boy, I used to climb the mango tree and just enjoy myself. In fact, to the point that I had some little dots all on my face from the mango you know, when you just pick the mango from the tree, the, the thing, it has some juice that comes of the white one. And that thing would just flash on my face. And it burns. But I love mango so much, so I rather than I care. I would climb in a mango tree. And I would spend the first 10 mangoes inside. Are you listening to the preacher? I don't know your favorite fruit. But when I get to glory, because I'm determined to love. Are you determined? Now, I'm a fall short with other things, but I'm determined to love. You got to be determined. I'm determined to love. Are you, are you listening to the preacher? Come on, man, I'm determined. You got to be determined to love. I'm determined to love. And because of that, Jesus said, Son, I'm going to give you access to the tree of life. Some of you love sour sub. That's okay. Zavocat. That's okay. Someone say raspberry. Someone say guava. Watermelon. Passion fruits. I don't know about you, but, but, but I love what it says, that in the city, there will be a river, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God, and on either side of the river, would be the tree of life, so at a tavern, you don't need to come on the other side. But just in case you're tired on the other side, we can make it on the other side. But I love this one. And God. And God. Himself. Will be there. Stand up with the preacher. Because in a little while. We'll be going home. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise if you believe that. In a little while, we'll be going home, praising leaders. I want to make a call now. I want to make a call. You are here, you're saying, Lord, I want to love you more. Jesus said, Do you love me more? that is seen with those around you. Lord, I want to love you more. My first love, that passion for lost soul, the passion to go after those that are in need, the passion to help, the passion to seek, the passion. You hear as the praise can lead us into our song, I'm going to ask you to come saying, Lord, increase my passion. God bless you. Lord, increase my love for you. Increase my love. I don't want my love to grow old. You know, every now and then we need a renewal of our love. What do you say? But Lord, increase my love for you. Praise the Lord.
Lord, increase my love for you. Throughout history, Christians have often found themselves strained between love and on the other hand, duty. And many of us have leaned on the side of duty than leaning on the side of love. He said, love me so much so that nothing should stand between you and me. You see, love upholds everything. Love is the central theme of the Godhead. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. It took the very life of God because he loved us so much. Heads up, bow. Heads up, bow. Great God. You love us so much that even though sin demanded a just cost, you could have watched Jesus on the cross dying by himself because the fury of justice being met says that God must be satisfied with the offering but the Bible says that you could not stay in glory any longer you call the Holy Ghost call the angels came to the cross hover over the cross Darkness filled the atmosphere. Paul said God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Father, today we thank you for your love. Thank you for first loving us. God commanded his love towards us so that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Thank you for your love. And Lord, sometimes along the way our love fuzzed out other things begin to take your place our earthly duties begin to take your place our friends begin to take your place loved ones begin to take your place and the passion we had for you before seems to fuzzle out but today will you please renew and restore the joy of our salvation Renew the love in us when we first met you at the cross when we first saw the light and the burdens of our hearts rolled away. God increase our faith in the process because if we love you and have faith, you said you would do greater works through us. So we want to thank you. And Lord, today we are determined as we come to a close that nothing will separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus nothing absolutely nothing not angels no power on earth or in the spiritual realm no power of weakness in high places no power beneath the earth God nothing nobody will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus and so today on a divine inspiration we say Lord restore and renew our love for you and one day because we love you you will stand on the banks of eternity and declare these words come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepare for you from the foundation of the world 
what a day that will be and we will echo back we love you Lord we love you will be the resounding echo on the base of eternity and Lord save us for this is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus I say in the mighty name of Jesus give the Lord a hand of praise give somebody a hug tell them I love you give somebody a hug tell them I love you give somebody a hug tell them I love you Brother Ashley, you can do a better job than Brother Ashley. Give somebody a hug, Brother Ashley. You can do a better job than that. <laughs> partner, give somebody a hug, partner. Give, give, give the girl a hug. Give her a better hug than that. <laughs> All right, so before I leave, we're going to have our deacons stand out to the door as you're leaving out. If you came with a special offering to help, please drop it in the basket. We'll be standing out to the door as you're going out. Amen? God bless you. Give the Lord another hand of praise, please. Give him another hand of praise. Let the church say amen. amen. Really? pastor said all of that he, he had such a wonderful message the praise team really dropped the hammer today and all you can say is amen really you can do better than that let the church say amen okay that's not good enough let the church say amen God needs to hear this let the church say amen thank you and that wasn't so hard we want to thank you for being here with us today, we had a wonderful time in the house of the Lord today. I know I was blessed. Were you blessed? Did the pastor speak to you? Did the praise team speak to you? We also want to thank our audience, those who are watching online. We thank you. This wouldn't be possible without your support, and we ask you to continue to share in this ministry with us. There's lunch served after, so we want everyone to stay back. Fellowship and continues to show that love that Pastor talked about today. So we want to thank you for the wonderful time we have had today. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing this wonderful day. Lord, you have shown us through your manservant what it is that we need to do, what you're expecting of us. Help, Father, that when we leave here, we will actually manifest that in our daily lives with each other, with our family, with our friends, and with our church brethren. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. It is my prayer in Jesus' name.
you're worthy, Jesus. Let's do it, Mark. Lift you up. 